One interesting thing about the early days of World of Warcraft was a lot of the voices were actually done by employees. When Bolvar, as he walked past the battlefield, you heard different Alliance soldiers. One of those was me. Hi, I'm Taryn Gregory, lead cinematic narrative designer for World of Warcraft. Today we're going to be talking about Wrath of the Lich King, more specifically, in-game cinematics and how they came to be. Warcraft 3 actually ended on a cliffhanger. Arthas claimed Frostmourne, and it claimed his soul. And it is here where the spire of Ice Crown Citadel towers over the frozen wastes. The story will continue in World of Warcraft. Blizzard has always had a legacy of just great cinematics. The video team had a lot of fun putting together these gameplay trailer moments, including the Black Temple, Zulamon, the Sunwell, and even side projects like No Mergon News. I love No Mergon News, it's so good. <laughs> but the creative leadership team of World of Warcraft began to see these as having greater potential. So we looked to in-game cinematics for the first time. Well, they came to us with a script, and it was evident from the pages that this was a major moment. This was the first time that the Lich King would confront the players in the flesh. I will show you the true meaning of fear. So we started storyboarding with our storyboard artist, actually drawing pen on paper, and created over 400 line drawings, and it revealed just the sheer scope of the complexity of the project. So now a handful of video artists are given an exciting and almost terrifying opportunity to make a cinematic using the in-game engine. But the engine really wasn't designed to do it. There'd never been any cinematic expressions in World of Warcraft, with the exception of these gameplay trailers that we've been putting together. So we were gonna have to get innovative, we were gonna have to try new things, and we ended up doing a whole lot with the engine we never thought was possible. The very, very most important part of any filmmaker's toolkit is the camera. And we really hadn't had any camera technology yet. One hookup was created that was actually called Commentator. Esports in WoW were in its early days, but they needed the ability to uh, have a really good camera to follow the action. And so the Commentator hookup in the game engine gave us the opportunity to write a WoW add-on called Camera Guy just like your damage meters, just like your UI. And this tool allowed us to do things we'd never done before in the engine. We could pilot a camera through and it could buffer and smooth the actions. And then we could play that path back again, which allowed us to record a background, a foreground, a midground, layer them together. This is what allows us to up the visual fidelity and really get depth in our scenes. And it produced some pretty, pretty good results. Even 14 years later, the fundamentals of Camera Guy and our add-ons are still used by our video department to capture in-game material. So the Wrathgate was ultimately the confrontation of three armies. Any fighting that you see on screen was NPCs that we specifically created to fight each other. But if we actually needed them to move from point A to point B, we didn't have the technology to do this yet. So what did we use? People. We actually had up to 40 quality assurance testers that would join us on voice chat and we'd get the raid together and they would take their places one, two, three action, and they would run from here to there, run from here to there. Sometimes we'd have custom models, and when we would use these custom models, they were only really loaded on the computer that was our camera. Some of the QA testers who were working as our actors, when they loaded into the game, they wouldn't see what we were seeing through the camera lens. They'd see little squares of blue and white checker patterns. And they kept asking on voice chat, are you sure it looks good? Does it look correct on your side? And we'd be like, yeah, yeah, no, it looks awesome. And it did look good. Rise up, sons of the Horde! My favorite shot was when the army of the Horde actually descended from their fortress and rode up the steps of the Wrathgate on the back of their wolves. And if you watch that shot, you'll see that actually it's a whole bunch of players lined up. They all hit run. They all hit slash cheer right on their mark. Oktaroga for the Horde! And that was all played in real time, just like a role-playing session, as any role players would make up their scene and play out a high adventure of the Horde storming the Wrathgate. Arthas! A lot of the charm of the Wrathgate cinematic in my heart is that it's truly in-game. And keeping it in that art style, I think, is valuable to create a more cohesive experience for the player. That's not to say that we didn't do some cosmetic work on the characters. 
We actually up the feature characters of the Wrathgate quite a lot. Before the character models were redone in Warlords of Draenor, the human male face had eyes with six sides on the pupils and didn't even have teeth. And we had to do a lot of work around that area to make it deform in a, in a satisfying way. But we did it in a way that it didn't move away from exactly what you thought the characters looked like. <laughs> the thing about the Wrathgate is it was probably over 90% of the shots were done using animations that already existed in the game. One of the most iconic lines of the Wrathgate. Did you think we had forgotten? Was just Putris up on the hillside, and he's just doing the slash bow animation, but at like 3% speed. You just take the speed slider all the way down, and he's actually doing this off camera and leaning down. Did you think? we had forgotten. And no one would be the wiser that that was really just an emote. This one shot where Bolvar is running into the frame and uppercutting the undead, if you could actually pull that shot apart, you could see that it was a hard swap from one animation to the other, just covered up by that foreground object. We used a lot of tricks to make sure that we could use the in-game animations effectively. My team started getting really innovative with the vehicle tech. This was a new technology that allowed players to kind of attach themselves to another object and drive it around. At the end, the big scene with the dragons as they're laying down the red dragon fire, we needed dragon breath. Instead of doing it traditional composite methods, we ended up making a vehicle out of the fire on the ground. The pillar of fire breath would sit in the seat of the fire, and then the dragon would attach to the pillar of flame. And the whole thing was now a car. We would just drive around the battlefield and it looked like a dragon strafing when it really it was just this vehicle being piloted around. <laughs> one of the things that made the Wrathgate so memorable is that it wasn't just the cinematic. And one of the coolest things that supported the Wrathgate was the new technology of phasing. When phasing technology came online, the events of the movie actually transpired in the game. And seeing how dynamic the world had become, both before and after, was completely new. And phasing is the technology that allows this to happen. As the Wrathgate started coming together, it actually inspired the content and quest design team to look to what needed to happen in the aftermath. But we needed to follow through on the events of the Wrathgate now, immediately, right in the quest follow-up. And that's how the battle for the Undercity came to be. As things come online and other designers see what other people are working on, it can reflect and push the story forward. Soon we march upon our fallen city and reclaim it. Death to the scourge and death to the living! When the Wrathgate first went live in that beta program and we started getting the feedback and it was some of the most positive feedback we'd received, all the hard work we'd done was paying off. This changed World of Warcraft. It made it feel more immersive, like the story was coming to life. And it had a profound effect moving forward in World of Warcraft. Through all subsequent updates, in-game cinematics became a major staple of all major moments in the game. I will never forget my experience working on the Wrathgate, the wonderful crew who worked on it with me, and how much it meant to me as a player, as a fan, as someone who just loves Warcraft. And even 14 years later, and dozens of in-game cinematics that have come in the aftermath. There's nowhere else I'd rather be. There's nothing I'd rather be working on. Luke Tarlgar! Thanks for taking this trip down memory lane with me, and I really hope to see you in Northrend. Take care. <laughs>